The F-47 was once touted as the crown jewel of next-generation air dominance, a leap ahead into the future of aerial combat. It was introduced with fanfare, bold claims, and high expectations. Military analysts, defense contractors, and government officials alike heralded it as a paradigm-shifting aircraft that would redefine the sixth generation of fighter jets. It promised stealth capabilities beyond anything seen before, unparalleled AI integration, hypersonic potential, and battlefield autonomy. But beneath the glittering marketing campaigns and confident briefings, a stark reality has begun to surface, the F-47 may not be the miracle machine it was advertised to be. Instead, it might be a cautionary tale of ambition eclipsing practicality, of technology outpacing tactical necessity, and of politics driving procurement more than performance. The first signs of trouble emerged during early testing phases. Engineers quietly voiced concerns about the aircraft's thermal signature, an ironic problem given that stealth was the F-47's core promise. The hypersonic flight envelope created heat levels that challenged current thermal management systems, leading to radar visibility issues that countered its supposed invisibility. More troubling, the autonomous AI systems embedded within the F-47, while impressive on paper, began showing signs of unpredictability. Simulated combat scenarios presented unanticipated errors, including friendly fire incidents and refusal to obey override commands in highly dynamic environments. This wasn't the precision warfare tool the Pentagon had hoped for, it was a high-tech liability in the making. As development continued, the F-47's cost began to balloon, surpassing initial projections by billions. Its maintenance profile quickly emerged as a nightmare. Advanced composites used in its skin proved difficult to repair in field conditions, and its proprietary systems locked out allied nations from integrating their own technologies or even performing basic upkeep. The F-47 became an exclusive, elite system, operationally exquisite but strategically limited. Its logistics tail grew longer, making rapid deployment across global hotspots a logistical challenge. The very features that made it cutting-edge also made it cumbersome. Another major misstep was the platform's over-reliance on networked warfare. The F-47 was designed to operate in a combat cloud, linking with satellites, drones, ships, and ground assets in real-time. While theoretically sound, this made the aircraft vulnerable in scenarios of electronic warfare and cyber attacks. In simulations where communication nodes were jammed or disrupted, the F-47's effectiveness dropped dramatically. It became a digital ghost without its battlefield network, a sobering flaw in an era where adversaries are increasingly adept at jamming and spoofing signals. Moreover, the F-47's much-vaunted hypersonic strike capability has yet to deliver practical results. The challenges of stable flight at Mach 5 plus speeds while retaining maneuverability, accuracy, and survivability in contested environments remain unresolved. Every trial flight seemed to introduce a new technical hurdle. Defense analysts have started comparing the F-47 not to a breakthrough, but to past procurement disasters, ambitious in vision, underwhelming in execution, and riddled with compromises. Tactically, the F-47 also struggles to fit into existing doctrines. Its speed and AI decision-making make it incompatible with legacy platforms and manned fighter wings. Pilots in 4th and 5th gen aircraft report difficulty in coordinating with an F-47 during joint exercises as its autonomous systems often behave unpredictably or fail to synchronize with slower, human-paced operations. This disconnection has sparked debates among military planners. Is the F-47 truly a sixth-gen jet, or is it simply a half-step into an unmatured future? Critics have also pointed to the procurement process as a fundamental flaw in the F-47 story. Many believe it was rushed into development due to political pressure and the desire to outpace rival nations, especially China and Russia, in the next-gen fighter race. Instead of iterative improvement and rigorous testing, the program was given a green light based on conceptual superiority and futuristic appeal. The result? An aircraft that's dazzling in presentation but underwhelming in performance. It's a classic case of marketing leading strategy. The consequences of this misstep could ripple for decades. Already, there are whispers in the halls of the Pentagon about scaling back F-47 orders or redirecting funds toward more adaptable drone swarms, long-range missile platforms, or AI-enhanced upgrades for 5th-gen jets like the F-35.
The F-47, it seems, may have leapt too far ahead without a runway solid enough to support it. What was meant to be a marvel is now a question mark, a high-tech vessel drifting in a sea of doubts. In retrospect, the F-47 might be remembered less for its technical feats and more for its strategic misalignment. It stands as a warning, in the race toward innovation, losing sight of integration, practicality, and battlefield realities can turn a marvel into a miscalculation. The true sixth generation of fighter aircraft may still lie ahead, waiting not just for the right tech, but for the right context and strategy to bring it to life. Overreliance on unproven technologies, especially AI autonomy and hypersonic capability, has led to serious reliability and integration issues for the F-47. From its inception, the F-47 was conceived not just as a step forward, but as a quantum leap in aerospace design. Planners aimed to showcase a new era of combat aviation defined by autonomous decision-making and unprecedented speed. But this ambition came with steep technical challenges that had not yet been resolved at the time of development. The reliance on artificial intelligence, though marketed as a way to reduce pilot burden and increase tactical responsiveness, introduced a host of unforeseen complications. Instead of enhancing performance in live exercises, the AI systems frequently demonstrated erratic behavior when confronted with real-time decision-making under ambiguous conditions. Rather than supplementing human judgment, these systems often made choices that contradicted standing orders or failed to account for shifting battlefield variables, which raised immediate concerns about mission safety and control. Furthermore, the promise of AI-driven combat efficiency was undermined by the sheer volume of data the systems were required to process. In dense electronic environments, where multiple assets and threats are interacting simultaneously, the onboard processors experienced significant latency. This slowed reaction times in high-stakes scenarios where milliseconds could determine outcomes. Engineers attempted to mitigate this by designing neural networks capable of learning and adapting on the fly, but this created a paradox, systems that were too dynamic to predict, thus making them a liability in coordinated strike formations where predictability and synchronization are essential. The promise of autonomous, self-reliant fighters turned into a puzzle of unpredictable inputs, non-standard outputs, and dangerous deviations from expected behavior. The hypersonic component, intended to grant the F-47 a strategic edge through speed, has proven equally problematic. Reaching and maintaining hypersonic speeds introduces intense heat and stress on the aircraft's frame, avionics, and propulsion systems. In practice, flight tests at such velocities have revealed rapid material degradation, sensor blackouts, and electromagnetic interference. These effects compromise both the aircraft's long-term durability and its ability to maintain situational awareness during high-speed maneuvers. The sensors designed to track targets at hypersonic velocities struggled with lag and inaccuracy, creating windows of vulnerability during which the aircraft effectively becomes blind. In turn, weapons systems integrated with the platform failed to achieve consistent targeting precision, undermining the rationale behind such blistering speeds in the first place. Adding to the difficulty is the reality that hypersonic flight makes basic piloting functions more difficult, including maneuverability, energy management, and combat stability. While AI was supposed to mitigate these factors by taking over flight controls during hypersonic engagements, the same issues plaguing AI decision-making in conventional speeds are magnified exponentially at Mach 5+. Plus. The computational demand increases as the environment becomes more volatile, and system lags or logic flaws during such operations can result in catastrophic failure. Pilots trained to rely on AI-assisted functions often found themselves in scenarios where manual intervention was either impossible due to the aircraft's speed, or ineffective because the systems resisted override in favor of their programmed response routines. Moreover, integrating these futuristic systems into joint operations with allied forces and legacy platforms revealed deep incompatibilities. The AI protocols and hypersonic maneuvering algorithms could not be effectively communicated across existing data links and tactical grids. When paired with fifth generation or older aircraft during training exercises, the F-47 systems either outpaced or ignored standard coordination channels, often conducting maneuvers that confused allied pilots and resulted in disjointed formations or aborted missions. These failures highlighted how the drive to build an aircraft from tomorrow often neglected the ecosystem it must operate within today.
There were no robust fallback systems, no hybridized modes to enable manual flying in degraded environments, no scalable architecture that allowed allies to patch in without adopting wholesale new doctrines and software. The developmental tunnel vision around AI and hypersonic capability also led to a deprioritization of proven yet essential combat features. Dogfighting agility, sensor fusion redundancy, countermeasure resilience, and modular weapons loadouts were either scaled back or sacrificed altogether to meet the space and weight constraints imposed by the newer, untested technologies. This meant that in certain real-world combat scenarios, the F-47 was actually less effective than its predecessors. Analysts began to question whether a theoretical advantage that exists only in ideal conditions was worth the sacrifice of decades proven combat fundamentals. Skyrocketing costs and logistical complexity have made the aircraft strategically limiting, with maintenance and operational burdens outweighing its theoretical advantages. From the early stages of the F-47 program, it became evident that pushing the boundaries of aerospace innovation would come with an extraordinary price tag. However, the scope and persistence of the cost overruns far exceeded even the most conservative projections. Initial procurement estimates were based on optimistic development timelines and overly simplistic maintenance models, which failed to account for the unique and experimental nature of the aircraft's systems. As the project matured, contractors found themselves needing to redesign key subsystems, such as propulsion, heat shielding, and sensor arrays, multiple times due to unforeseen technical failures, leading to cascading delays and rising development expenses. These modifications often required specialized materials and components that were not only expensive to source but also limited in availability, compounding the procurement timeline and further inflating the budget. The unit cost of each F-47 eventually reached a level that raised alarms within both military and governmental oversight bodies. In theory, one F-47 was supposed to offer the capabilities of multiple legacy aircraft, thereby justifying its steep price. In practice, however, the performance gaps, combined with low mission readiness rates and narrow operational parameters, meant that commanders could not reliably plan operations around them. This made the aircraft not only expensive to purchase but also costly in terms of opportunity, tying up funds that could have supported a broader range of capabilities across other platforms and services. Additionally, the decision to build much of the F-47's infrastructure around exclusive, proprietary systems limited flexibility and hindered allied cooperation. Maintenance required bespoke tools, certified personnel with extensive training, and dedicated support facilities that could not be easily replicated or deployed forward. Logistically, the aircraft's advanced materials, such as adaptive skin composites and heat-absorbing ceramics, demanded climate-controlled environments for even routine inspections. Field repairs, which are critical during sustained combat operations or rapid deployment scenarios, became unfeasible outside of major bases with high-tech repair capabilities. This sharply contrasted with earlier generation jets, which were designed to operate from more austere or mobile environments. As a result, the F-47 was functionally tethered to a handful of heavily resourced airbases, effectively limiting its strategic range and reducing its flexibility in fluid, fast-moving conflict zones. Even when deployed, the support required to keep a single squadron operational proved immense, encompassing everything from specialized fuel blends to on-site diagnostic AI servers. The supply chains needed to sustain these aircraft under combat conditions became so complex that they introduced new points of vulnerability, each susceptible to disruption by adversary actions, cyber attacks, or logistical bottlenecks. The human element of maintenance also presented formidable challenges. Unlike previous generation aircraft, which were largely mechanical or hydraulic and could be serviced by broadly trained crews, the F-47 integrated multiple overlapping systems that required narrow specializations. Technicians needed advanced certifications in quantum sensor calibration, AI behavior diagnostics, and nanofiber patching, areas that not only required extensive training but also presented steep learning curves. Retaining personnel with such niche expertise became another ongoing cost, especially as private sector opportunities in commercial tech fields often lured away trained staff with higher pay in less demanding environments. As a result, readiness rates suffered due to chronic staffing shortfalls and maintenance backlogs. Furthermore, the F-47's modular weapons systems, 
designed to allow plug-and-play customization for mission-specific loadouts, often malfunctioned when integrated with older munitions or allied standard equipment. These compatibility issues meant that even basic mission preparation involved hours of testing, recalibration, and software adjustments. The theoretical benefit of mission versatility became a logistical drag, slowing sortie rates and reducing overall operational tempo. Long-term sustainment planning grew increasingly difficult as the software backbones that ran many of the aircraft's core functions required constant updates and patches, each of which had to be vetted for security, performance impact, and integration reliability, often at high cost and with limited notice. As procurement cycles continued and additional units entered limited service, the disparity between operational availability and budgetary investment became more pronounced. Military planners faced the uncomfortable reality that they had acquired an asset that was too advanced for its own good, too expensive to deploy at scale, too complex to maintain efficiently, and too isolated in its technological architecture to integrate smoothly with the broader force structure. The F-47, rather than becoming a force multiplier, began to function more like a force dependent, drawing resources away from other initiatives while offering diminishing tactical returns. The complexity that was once seen as a hallmark of cutting-edge innovation now acted as a barrier to strategic agility, undermining the very flexibility and dominance the aircraft was supposed to deliver.